Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here. Next level painting. You want on the literal best of all days. Another painting tutorial coming in super clutch. Part two of painting a contemptor pattern dreadnought. And we're taking this thing to the next level. Last week you may have remembered that we took it to the tabletop. We took it to the tournament standard. And this week I'm gonna show you some ancient Chinese techniques on how to just pop it. How to take, you know, a model through the stages of completion. How you know, you don't have to half fast an army to get it to the tabletop, how you can actually play armies in multiple stages of completion, so that way you can maximize your fun and love of this hobby. In essence, bringing hobby back. Now let me pause for one second to talk about someone who is near and dear to me who is sponsoring this episode. Jummer.com, that's gemmer.com. These guys are a social media platform, very similar to any other social media where you link up with your friends and you share your ideas, except these guys are collection based. They're starting a whole new part of their uh, their interface that's for war gamers like us, for miniatures and everything like that. The whole concept is you get on there and you share your ideas, you share your models with each other, you share your collections and you can even like swap and buy from each other using their interface. I am addicted to this website. I literally swipe through it on my phone all the time, checking out other people's fresh ass stuff. I mean, miniatures aside, I'm checking out Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Z toys, Gundam stuff, uh, Doctor Who uh, collectibles. Like it's literally the dopest shit ever. And we are actually doing a giveaway with them. And we're giving away something amazing. We're giving away an Awada Eclipse airbrush, the official airbrush of next level painting. This shit right here, sitting on my desk. I use this literally every day. I've done multiple tutorials with this. This is what makes the magic happen. It's a relatively expensive piece of the operation. I'm giving new inbox one of these away. You may be asking yourself, how do I enter this contest? Very simple. You're gonna check the description box below. There's a link there. That link will take you to jimmer.com for you to activate your membership. It's a totally free website, 100% free, no strings attached. If you use that membership link that I've sent you and you sign up there, that enters you into a drawing to win. And now you can upload your collection. Every time you upload, you're getting entries. So check it out. Sign up, upload collections, enter to win, and at the end of the month, we will announce the winner of this Iwata Eclipse and we will ship it to your house for free. Anyway, let's jump right into this tutorial. Let's do it. Taking this Contemptor Pattern Dreadnought to the next level, we're gonna start off with Amethyst Purple from the Reaper Master Series. We used it in the last video for our highlights with the airbrush. Now, we're gonna take our paintbrush to it, and we're just gonna start establishing some clean edge highlights. These are really easy to do on a model like this, where you basically can just drag the flat end of the paintbrush against these 90 degree corners. It just comes right off. You don't have to sit there and try to draw a line with a steady hand. Um, if you want to make it thicker though, you can. So I am going to you know, go through after I hit all these little nuts, all these little bolts, and I'm just going to start drawing that, that highlight everywhere I want. And I'm going to Make it a little thicker than I need to in some places so I can come back in with the violet and trim it up. But you can already see it's already popping out that shoulder pad with just a few paint strokes on that dark edge. That's what I call the dark edge highlight. It has made this purple look somewhat reflective. It's almost a, you know, sort of a poor man's non-metal metallics technique. Uh, and you, I mean, you can see dark edge highlighting is a pretty fun way to create some incredible contrast on your model. Traditionally, you would you know highlight to a light color, and then you would continue to highlight even more on top of the light color. We're doing some of that here, but we're also not forgetting to hit that dark edge and get that and, and have the dark edge be in places that you wouldn't expect it to be, like towards the tops of the shoulder pads. It just creates a really interesting model. So now we're gonna jump in and grab the model air uh, violet, and we're gonna take it and we're gonna kind of cut back some of these thick lines. And this color is a little darker than even the last uh, violet we dropped off with the airbrush just because it's going on super thick. And it does really help, you know, create that final pop, that total metallic look. I'm gonna go in, I'm even gonna just manually draw it in some of these little um, 
notorious Games Workshop lines that they put all over the models to just create some more contrast. You see, I'll put it there in the shoulder. Anywhere I can find a good spot to put it in, I will just trace it in there. Basically painting by numbers with that little technique. It's kind of annoying. You can use washes, you can do whatever you want, but I like using one of the colors I have control over. So now we're going to grab that gunmetal gray from Vallejo. This is one of the best silvers in the business. We do a quick dry brush. We're going to go through and we're going to dry brush all the metallics from last video. And this is going to make, you know, all that metal look antiqued and have a nice finish. What we had at the beginning of this video and at the end of last week's video was a model you could bring to a tournament and not be in shame and actually be kind of proud of. And I am showing you right now that that is just a pre-stage to just to take it to the next level. You, you know, after you come back from the tournament, just follow these steps and now one more piece in your army is uh, looking a little bit better, like a centerpiece for your display board. And over time, every model in your army will look this good as long as you walk these steps, follow this process. And as you see, we've done dry brushing a billion times. We're, we're getting in there, we're getting tight control. We're getting it in really close to the purples. You can see here on the leg, I'm even. I'm not even going crazy. I'm actually leaving a little bit of more silver on the brush than you typically would for a dry brush because I want to control this dry brush without like, you know, slinging metal dry flex on the purple uh, and ruining my amazing airbrush finish. So there's a lot of techniques you can do with a dry brush. Anyway, let's jump right back into the Molten Bronze. This is a private seal press P3 formula. And we're gonna go back over all these golds from last week's video. And we're gonna start building up some subtle highlights. And don't even overthink these. Just go in there, because this color is the color we used already, except we washed the color from last week. So this is a really easy and subtle transition highlight color, since it's essentially already been the neutral color in this process because like i said we painted everything on this guy with this color washed it black coming back to this color it is now turned into a nice highlight and then we can even take it one step further once we're once we lay down all this highlighting but that's what i'm saying though is uh since this color is the color we used you can kind of move really fast you don't have to overthink the steps you can go in there and just build the highlights up really easy really fast once you lay them all down and you smooth out some of these harder washes, get those transitions looking clean and smooth, uh, we're gonna move on to some of the detail areas on his leg. And this leg has obviously got some more subtleties to it. So we're gonna slow down our pace here. We're gonna be a little bit more methodical, trying to build these highlights up because this wreath does have subtle details. Luckily, we did wash it and the wash does bring out some of the details you, can, you can't really see, you know? Sometimes you paint something metallic, you can't even see the details in it until you wash it. And speaking of uh, details, we're gonna take this silver and we're gonna mix it a little bit in with that molten bronze we just used. And we're gonna create the final highlight to the, to the gold, essentially. And we're gonna go in there and now we're gonna very subtly pick out and methodically the tips of some of these angles in this gold to create that final pop to the gold highlight. And this is kind of one of the tricks that, you know, we use in Next Level Painting to create that really just unnaturally smooth metal that has all its own transitions already built into it. Um, it's all about mixing that silver in. And, and, and this is this is one of the best colors too. This is Vallejo Air Silver. This is the brightest fucking silver I've ever used. Only takes a couple of drops of the silver mixed in with the bronze to get this effect. And also, if you want to use it anywhere else on any other silvers, this is, like I said, the most gangster highlight I've ever seen. So I'm coming in here on these uh, nuts and bolts on this guy's arms. I'm using that silver, but I mixed it in a little bit with our gun gray uh, to create a nice little uh, reflection on those little bits. I don't even know what the fucking point of those little balls are. Like, I guess they're bolts, but it's like, I feel like they have the technology to not have bolts look like that. So I assume they're just for looks, so ball armor. Now we're gonna take some Troll Slayer Orange and we're gonna start, we're gonna do a cool little complimentary color on the eyes on this bigger model. We're gonna go in there and paint his eyeballs Troll Slayer Orange. And then we're gonna start blending it up to a yellow because that is obviously the complement of purple. Everyone knows it, but I do like to start with a nice little, little base layer of orange. It gives kind of a little glowy effect. It looks pretty sweet. And there he is, he's got nice little intense eyes, highlighted them up yellow to orange, like he's intense. He's got a fierce gaze. 
And of course, no tutorial will be complete without the application of Typhus Corrosion. We're just gonna put a little bit of Typhus Corrosion on these exhaust ports, keep it classy. The entire purpose of this model was to keep it nice and clean, Imperial style. This is a pre-heresy paint job. We're supposed to be looking super fresh and super clean, and we are. But I figure the tips of these smoke launchers, uh, of these smokestacks might get a little, little sooty during the game, you know what I'm saying? So we're also gonna throw some on the bottom of his foot. I figure that typhus corrosion on the bottom of the foot, after it dries, you can throw a quick little dry brush on it with the same color you use the dry brush to base, and it gives it kind of a neat little effect. So let's grab some black and let's do something that you guys have all been waiting for. Let's first build up a, the, 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 the weather pattern on the assault cannon. First, we're just gonna subtly establish a nice sooty carbon scoring from this black. We're gonna go in real thin. We're gonna be very subtle because I am. this is gonna be a pre-step to doing the heat scoring that you guys have been waiting to see here. You've seen me do videos on it in the past. I'm gonna run, run, run it down one more time let you guys see this technique. This technique is easy. Reaper Orange Brown. It's one of the best browns there is. We're gonna build up a little bit more carbon over that black we just put down. Be real subtle. We're trying to just have the tip be super hot here. Then pull out your Scarlet Red from Vallejo Air and then build another little transition up. And you're always working from the tip of the gun back. And you're always trying to leave a little bit of the, the color you laid down in the previous step visible. So give yourself enough room to always keep that layer visible. We're gonna grab the first purple I can, I can see here, and that's Minotaur Lich Purple, or Itchy Moss, or Icky Moss Purple. And we're gonna build another little transition. Like I said, and the, the goal here is to keep the red and the brown visible while also keeping some purple visible. And you just gotta keep building that step up. So establish that purple. Make sure you, you make sure you get them to blend together, but make sure each one of them still remains its own color. That's very important to this effect. The final stage, possibly the most important stage, you gotta get that Signar Blue highlight from Privateer Press, that's the P3 formula. And very subtly, we're gonna download some of this blue on the very tip where they shoot through. So it's, it's signifying that it's superheated there. And you're getting some of that carbon flexing, some of that superheated metal. And there you go. We are now left with a super fresh looking Contemptor Dreadnought. He has now gone one step or two steps beyond the tabletop in my opinion. He is a centerpiece to your army now. And you can apply these techniques to literally every model in your army, going from the tournament to beyond the tournament. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. Do not forget that we are giving away an airbrush at the end of the month. Sign up to jammer.com. Follow the links in the description box below. Peace out, homies. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.